Ooh, shalom, shalom. This is Falling the Shoe. Welcome again to the Rock. Um, once again, uh, numerous amounts of emails um, from seed sales to questions, and I am making every attempt to get. Uh, I'll be getting some seed orders out today uh, for those that have paid, and then. Um, I'll be answering a question right here. But I want to answer it a different way. You know, one of the things that I find most amazing is that people are, there. a lot of people are miserable. And I'm, I'm, I'm just being real. And they, they're choosing misery. They're choosing to live an unhappy life. Um unable to make decisions, unable to to be assertive in the things that they want to in life. You know, they ought, I noticed, you know, when you mentioned faith, faith for a lot of people is always faith when they're not moving, but their faith never causes them to move. You know, I have faith that, you know, if I'm just patient, things will work themselves out, but they never say, I have faith that if I actually get up and go, it'll work out. It kind of reminds me of a you know person on YouTube who makes the mention of the term "you need to shoot your shot," and he, he when he references that, uh, it means that when the opportunity comes, you need to take it. Shoot your shot. You know, for those who have ever played sports, I played high school and I played college basketball, um, and. One of the things, of, you know, towards the end of a game, you know, let's say you're down by one point, and I'm using basketball as an analogy. You're down by one point, and you need to make a basket. You need a bucket. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to use regular terms because I know this is for a lot of sisters that I've asked this question or who have made a mention that they're miserable. And, you know, they smile on everybody else's face, but inside they're really miserable. They're not living what Yah intended them to live, you know, as far as they're single. But this can apply for men also. So shooting your shot, you know, end of the game, one possession left. Let's say you're on a court and I'm on a court with three other people. And we need a shot. We need you, you know, a shot to be made. And I have the ball and I'm dribbling and they try to guard me to stop me from shooting the shot. So I pass the ball to you. What are you going to do? And, and so many people are so fearful to make moves or to do anything that they'll just hold the ball and let the time run out and will lose by one point. Or they could shoot the shot and they'll make it or miss it. But so many people are afraid of missing the shot that they don't take it. Well, you do realize if you don't take the shot, you're still going to lose by one point, right? If you take the shot and miss it, you're still going to lose by one point. And so many people would rather lose with inactivity, meaning they didn't take the shot, than to take the shot and maybe even make the shot and win the game. As somebody who's played college basketball, there's been many game-winning shots that I've taken. And there's been several that I've missed. You know what happens? Huh. Well, had I not taken a shot, we would have lost by one. And I took the shot and missed it, and we still lost by one. But at that time, Taking the shot was the best chance that we had of winning. And so many people are full of rejection, they're full of doubt, they're full of, 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 of double-mindedness and, and there's complacency, that they refuse to take a shot. They refuse to take the shot that could change their life. Men are refused to take that shot in life and move. Okay, hey, you know, yes, things are happening in this world, but if you just keep sitting there with the ball in your hand, the, the, the clock's going to expire and you're going to lose by one point. So they choose misery. They choose to sit there and do nothing. Then to take their shot. And to live with the results of that shot. But mind you, if you don't take the shot, the results are going to be the same, if not worse. Because people are going to question, why didn't you shoot the ball? Why did you just hold it and let the, 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 the time run out? Because I was so scared I was going to miss it. Yeah, but you didn't do anything. We have to stop choosing misery. Time is short. Time is too short. And it's inactive 
complacency, non-assertive spirit that we have in, in, inside of us today is causing the destruction of a lot of people. It's causing people's misery. They're telling me I'm miserable. I plaster on a smile in front of my friends. I plaster on my smile when I go to fellowship. I plaster on a smile, a smile when I go to church. But I'm miserable. Why are you choosing misery? Why are you not shooting your shot? Because I'm afraid of what my family is going to think about me. I'm afraid of what my friends are going to think about me. I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid. I had a, I had a sister tell me, and, and I have her permission to say this, that she was actually considering at one point polygyny, joining a man's house, and the man already had a, a wife. But she was really fond of the person. She got scared of what her family was going to think. And that was a year or two ago. And she did it. And the man moved on and, and, and you know, took the wife that he had. For those of you who want to get an argument about adultery, listen, I have whole studies on, on, on polygyny uh, uh, on, my, on my channel. So you can go back and look at those, at those uh, uh, discussions and in those uh, studies in the Bible. But she's stuck now and she's by herself and her situation's even worse than it was when she... And her family abandoned her. And she's stuck. And she didn't take her shot. Because she was afraid of what everybody else would think if she took it. You have to understand. This is your life. Yah's leading you in your life. And if Yah's leading you, there are going to be times that he's going to lead you in directions and places that don't make sense to you. Like, it didn't make sense to me that he would leave me, a city boy, a boy who's lived the streets and lived gangs and lived, you know, I, I say that lightly. <laughs> it goes a lot deeper than that. Lived a life that was completely contrary to uh, uh, Yah, completely contrary to life, com completely contrary to anything. And here I am in the middle of the Ozarks. Homesteading. Off grid. I took my shot at changing my life. The shot presented itself and I took it. And I forsook everything. I've got family, I've got brothers. I have friends, I had all the, these things. And I forsook them all to follow Yah. To take the shot. He was knocking at the door and I had the opportunity to answer in the move in faith and allow him to completely change my life around to, to rip things away from me that I truly thought were important to me that I needed and he set me on this path now where I'm a homesteader and I lost a lot but I have so much more that I never would have had had I sat there with the ball in my hand and let the clock expire and then look to blame somebody else for my misery, I took my shot. And that's what I continue to do in this life. You know, we take the shot when we go and apply for a job. We take the shot when, you know, the, the, I mean the shot, not not a shot. But I'm talking about, you know, the shot for the win the game. We take the shot in many other aspects of life. But we never take the shot when it comes to actually improving our lives and our situations. We sit back and we just stare. And we wait and we hope that if we're just passive, uh, that Yah will misinterpret our passivity as faith and, and he'll start just opening up doors for us. Well, he, he may open up the door, but you got to walk through it. So that still requires you to take the shot. To take th that jumper to win the game. He may open up all sorts of avenues, but if you don't get up and go, that opportunity is going to pass on and you're going to be stuck there five or ten years later looking at it like so many people are five or ten years later looking at their situation and saying man I should have done this and I should have done that and I'm watching people around me take their shots and they're moving ahead and they're further al along in life and they're happy and they're smiling and I'm still sitting here misery miserable plastering on a smile every time I get around people to pretend like things are going the way I want them to go to pretend like I'm happy, to pretend like I'm living a fulfilled life, and I'm miserable. But I can't tell anybody, because all the people that I would tell 
you know, that, that, that really wanted something for me will tell me, you should have taken your shot. When I challenge you now, all those that have sent me these emails, take your shot. There's one second left, two seconds left in the game, you're down by one point. And the ball's been passed to you. And you can sit there and hold the ball and let the clock expire. And then go back at home and, and then think about what you could have done. And I should have just taken that shot. I should have just thrown the ball at the basketball hoop and hopefully it went in. Or you can actually turn and face the basketball hoop, aim, and shoot. Faith without your works is dead. If you're unwilling to take the shot, why are you on the basketball court? Why are you praying that Yah changes this and changes that? Did you expect him to grab the ball from you and put it in the basketball hoop? Or did you think that he might put you in a position to not be miserable? He might give you the opportunity to actually take your shot. Faith without works is dead. And if you look at our forefathers, they took their shots in life. And they truly had faith. Not the faith that makes you freeze, but the faith that makes you move. Do you have freezing faith? Which is usually fear. Because fear makes you, you know, uh, fear makes you freeze. Or do you have faith that makes you move? Stop living in misery. Because time is short. Bless y'all. Shalom.